A main component of an ILS approach is the localizer transmission, which provides lateral guidance to the runway. It does this with a pair of highly directional radio transmissions, one at 90 Hz, the other at 150 Hz. Where the two signals overlap, an aircraft with the proper receiver will have indications showing on the extended center line of the runway, as this VOR receiver does by having the vertical needle centered. In addition to broadcasting this signal on the approach side of the runway, which is known as the front course, the localizer antenna also broadcasts the same signal in the opposite direction, with the 90 and 150 Hz transmissions on opposite sides. Where these transmissions overlap is known as the back course. Both the front course and back course are represented by these feather symbols. In addition, the side with the 150 Hz transmission is given a shading like this. We know that a front course is flown by starting out on an intercept course like a vector that ATC would provide us. Initially, the aircraft here on the right side of the localizer course would have these indications, the localizer needle to the left and the glide slope needle above center. As we approach the extended center line, we enter the feather and the needle begins to move towards center, centering up when we're perfectly aligned. As we continue inbound, we intercept the glide slope from below so that needle moves down to center as well. This is how the ILS localizer front course is flown. Now, let's say we get a bit off course to the right side. It happens to the best of us, and we get the indication of the needle swinging to the left. As we continue inbound, we're not stabilized for landing, and we'll need to do a missed approach. As we maintain this course past the runway, the needle stays to the left. Notice the two flag remains on even as we pass the approach end of the runway. This is because the localizer antenna is located at the far end, the departure end, of this runway. So it's when we reach the antenna that the flag flips from to to from. We're now picking up the back course transmission. As we continue to fly out, the needle stays on the left side of center. Let's look at what our receiver will show us in this case. First of all, if there's one thing you remember about localizers, and about VORs in general for that matter, it's that the indication on the receiver stays the same regardless of aircraft heading. We can spin around in circles, and as long as we stay in this position on this side of the feather, the indication won't change. Also, notice that the needle has remained on the left side throughout this exercise. No matter what then, as long as we're on the shaded side of the feather, as we are here on the back course, as well as when we were on the front course, the needle will be off to the left and vice versa. On the other side of the feather, the non-shaded side, the needle will always be to the right. And again, this is totally not dependent on aircraft heading. If you can remember these points, it'll help you grasp the somewhat difficult topic of the back course. So why would you fly a back course? Well, some airports use a back course in an instrument approach procedure. There's a few dozen of these throughout the country. Here's an approach plate at Mesquite Metro in Texas. This is the localizer back course approach to runway 36. It uses the same localizer antenna as the ILS approach to the opposite runway, 18, uses. So why not just build a second localizer for runway 36? Well, it could be a cost-saving measure. Maybe the prevailing winds favor runway 18, so it didn't make sense to build a second localizer in the off chance you'd need to use 36. If you're familiar with this airport and know why they use the back course for this approach, get in touch and let us all know. Anyways, at first glance, this approach plate looks deceptively similar to one for a standard localizer front course approach. So here's where we can see it's actually a back course approach. First of all, the procedure title spells it out by saying LOC DME BC, back course runway 36. Next, they've actually called out back course here on the plan view section of the plate to further distinguish it. Another difference is that in the profile view, they've indicated that the glide slope should be ignored. You may receive a glide slope indication, which could be false or not, but in any case, it's designed for the opposite runway, not this one. A localizer back course approach is a non-precision approach. There's no vertical guidance. Now you can see that in the minimum section where the decision height is 437 feet AGL. This is more than 200 feet higher than the standard height for a precision ILS approach. Finally, we can see that this is a back course because that shading indicating the 150 hertz signal is on the left side of the feather, not the right side as we'd see on a front course symbol. This is useful because we can think of flying down the back course the same as driving down the wrong side of the street, just like in Britain. 
Okay, so we approach along the feeder route from the VOR back here. Notice the initial indications on the receiver. First, we're going to ignore the glide slope needle, so it being above center means nothing to us. Next, the needle is to the right. This is not what we'd see on the front course. Rather than chase the needle, we need to fly away from or pull the needle by flying left of the approach course. This is what we're already doing. We're on a northwesterly heading to intercept the approach course. So as long as we hold this, the needle will center up and we're flying away from the needle. So we intercept the back course, turn inbound on the approach course. Now let's see what happens if we get off course. What if we get blown to the left of course? What will the needle do? We'll be on the shaded side of the feather so the needle will swing to the left. Normally we'd fix this by chasing the needle, but we're driving a Briton here on the back course, so we'll need to fly away from the needle to the right to get it centered again. Another, albeit less common usage of the back course, is to provide not inbound guidance to a runway, but outbound guidance on a missed approach procedure. Here we have the infamous Loke DME Echo approach in Aspen, Colorado. This approach is known as being one of the harder ones to fly, and involves a number of non-standard features. Aspen sits in a beautiful valley in the Rocky Mountains. The approach is situated in a bowl surrounded by peaks on three sides. This approach involves following a localizer in from the north and making a steep descent to clear terrain on a very unconventional six and a half degree glide path down to the runway. The steepness of this final approach is one of the challenging aspects of flying this procedure. Another challenging part is the missed approach procedure. After flying inbound on the localizer, if we don't have the field in sight and need to go missed, we break off the approach a few miles short of the runway and make a climbing right turn out to the northwest. The guidance we follow on the mist is not any signal from the airport, but a localizer antenna situated in a remote area near one of the ski slopes above the airport, and we follow its back course outbound. Tricky, huh? It makes those double black diamond slopes next to it look tame by comparison. Okay, so let's see how this will work. We'll need two VOR receivers. One is tuned to the localizer for the airport. We'll follow that needle in and it's normal sensing, just like any front course. Notice the shading on the right side of the feather. The other will be tuned to the off-field localizer in the peaks above the airport. This is the back course. Notice the shading on the left side of the feather. Now, when we start this approach, we'll be on the shaded side of the back course feather. And this means that the needle on the receiver tuned to the back course will be off to the left. So when we shoot this approach, go missed, and try to intercept the back course outbound, how are we going to navigate? Let's think about driving in England again. Driving the wrong way on the wrong side of the road would actually be right, at least here in the States anyways. So flying outbound on the back course, we can actually chase the needle just the same as we would flying inbound on the front course. As far as localizers go, two wrongs do make a right. The approach play calls out this confusion by stating that when flying the back course outbound, the needle is normal sensing, aka chase the needle. Notice as we fly this that the direction the aircraft is pointed doesn't change where the needle is. Whether we're pointing into the airport or away, the needle stays on that left side, and we chase it here to intercept. Pretty confusing, but if you take it step by step, it's not too bad. So here we go. We start out flying the localizer inbound and it's normal sensing. Chase the needle as any localizer front course would be. We execute the mist, start our turn out, and now it's going to still be normal sensing. Chase the needle on this. And we'll navigate that way for the remainder of the mist procedure. Flying a back course is confusing, and one wrong turn in instrument conditions can be deadly, so make sure you're fully comfortable before attempting a back course approach. One feature some aircraft have is a back course setting on their autopilot. This will tell the autopilot that the localizer it's tracking should be flown inbound with reverse sensing rather than normal sensing, as it would for a normal front course. If this was helpful, please click subscribe so that you could stay up to date on every new training video coming out each Tuesday and Friday and get access to posts and articles that will take your training even further. It just takes one click and it's so worth it.